In this video, we're going to be talking about the five stages your ex goes through in getting back together with you. These are the five emotional stages that your ex uh, could be at on the process of getting back together. And it'll hopefully help you to understand what your ex is experiencing emotionally and more importantly, help you to understand how to respond if your ex is at a certain stage. Uh, but first, my name is Clay with Modern Love Life, where we help you get the great loving relationship that you're looking for without having to play mind games, without having to play hard to get, and without having to pretend to be someone or something that you are not. If you like what we're doing here, please do me a favor by giving this video a thumbs up and by subscribing to this YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed. It does help us out. It helps to tell YouTube that like, hey, this is good stuff and you should show more of Clay's videos to people out there. Um, seriously, though, it does help us out. Um, also, if you are interested in in kind of learning more about how to navigate this whole journey through your ex's five emotional stages, I want you to know that we do have a course called the X Solution Program. I'll put a link to that down below in the description box for this video. Not going to hard sell you on it here, but um, it, it's right there if you want to check it out. Um, all right, so so I've made videos on the five stages your ex goes through before in the past, and they've done really well. However, I just want to make this video uh, to to kind of simplify it a little bit, uh, like like the the one in the past that's done pretty well has like this big question and answer thing tacked on to the end that actually has nothing to do with the five stages. And kind of like because of that, a lot of people like click off of the video, uh, which doesn't really help us so well with YouTube. Um, so I'm just going to make this without the question and answer at the end. So uh, basically, if you're to think about this, your ex goes on a certain journey emotionally um, following a breakup. And we've kind of isolated five specific emotional stages that your ex could potentially be in following a breakup um, and on the journey towards getting back together with you. Now, it's important to know that it's not like your ex always starts at the first stage and then kind of moves forward from there. Um, a breakup happens and it kind of like pushes your ex back a certain degree in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the scale from, you know, one to five. And kind of depending on what happened in the breakup, depending on how your ex uh, responded to things, like depending on how intense it was, like it was it just an amicable, amicable breakup or was it like a, like I hate your guts, you cheated on me kind of breakup or something like that, that's going to set the stage totally differently. But if I had to guess, probably most people initially start a breakup at riding the dragon, which is the third middle stage. Uh, we'll get into this more a little bit later, but uh, kind of based off of things that people do immediately after the breakup, like, you know, begging and pleading, promising up and down that things are going to be different and so on, um, they might actually end up backsliding even further, maybe more into like test drive or wall of reactants. Don't worry, we'll get into all of this uh, later on. So if you have no idea what any of these terms are, uh, I'll explain that soon. But just for simplicity's sake, we're going to start at the very far end of the spectrum, which is the wall of reactants. Okay, this is the first stage that your ex uh, might be in. This is honestly the probably one of the hardest stages to be in because your ex is probably not very communicative with you. Um, wall of reactants. Uh, reactants is a term that not a lot of people know, but they do know the feeling, the emotion that comes with it. And that is typically um, a feeling that someone has some sort of like hidden agenda, that they're not really interested in understanding you. They're not really interested in seeing things from your point of view, but they just want to move things towards their own agenda. And for better or worse, if your ex thinks that you have some sort of agenda of trying to get back together with them that is more important to you than listening to them, understanding them, connecting with them, and so on and so forth, your ex may have a very heightened level of reactance. And um, there are certain things that you can do and certain things that you can not do that might uh, increase your ex's reactance towards you or decrease your ex's reactance towards you. And these things are going to, of course, help your ex to move you know, further along through these five stages or further back through these five stages. But if you're finding yourself at the wall of reactance, your ex has very, very high levels of reactance towards you. Uh, in fact, they could be so high that your ex has just decided like, hey, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to interact with you at all. 
Um, I'm just going to shut you out. I'm going to ignore you. I'm not going to uh, speak to you. I'm going to not reply to your messages. Or if I do, it's just going to be to lash out at you. It's going to be to say, like, hey, stop talking to me. Like, there's no chance for us to ever get back together. Leave me alone or something like that, right? Um, honestly, it, it, it sucks to be at this stage, to have your ex at this stage in the, in the journey. Um, so what do you do, right? Because it's like, okay, we can't really communicate. What can you actually do to kind of lower that reactance just enough so that your ex is open to talking to you again and open to communicating to you again? And what you want to do is you want to show your ex that you understand what they're experiencing. You want to show them that you get how they're feeling. You want to show them that um, maybe the things that you've done in the past or the things that you did that hurt them or the things that you did that maybe even led to the breakup in the first place or maybe the things that you did after the breakup that made things worse, um, that you understand how all of that affected them. And you want to, of course, apologize for it, but you want to empathically show them how uh, your actions affected them and, of course, tell them kind of what was inspiring you to do these certain things. Like, you know, we don't just cheat on someone for the sake of cheating on them. We we do that because we're feeling certain things, because we're feeling unfulfilled in certain parts of our lives. We don't, um, you know, hurt someone's feelings because we feel like being a jerk. We're doing it because we feel maybe a little bit triggered ourselves or because there's something that's going on with us that's causing us to maybe lash out at someone. And so if you can express this to your ex, you can often get that, that opening just enough that your ex kind of moves from the, the wall of reactant stage into the second stage. And this one is called the test drive stage. Now at this point, um, your ex is, is able and willing to talk to you. They're communicative with you, but um, they're, they're not really opening up very much. They're most likely giving you like one or two word short little answers, you know, like, hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm okay. You know, something like that, but there's not much substance to it. Or maybe they're willing to talk to you about like surface level things, you know, like, oh, hey, I ran into so-and-so the other day or, uh, you know, stuff like that, right? But it's, there's not really a whole lot of emotional depth to it. This is the test drive stage. They're willing to talk to you. They're willing to interact with you. They're willing to see what it's like, but they're not really willing to commit in a deep emotional sort of way yet. They're kind of holding themselves back. They're keeping you at a distance. And what we want to do to get past this is to deepen the conversation from surface level communication or from this like, you know, one or two word answer of like, oh, I'm good, I'm okay, all that stuff. We want to deepen that down into uh, the emotional world of communication. There are really two levels of communication, at least in this regard. Um, there's surface level communication where we're talking about, you know, people, places, things, news events, TV shows, sports, stuff like that. Um, and then there's a deeper emotional level of communication, which is how things affect us emotionally, what we're feeling, what we're thinking, all of this sort of stuff. And as we can pull the conversation down from surface level to emotional communication, we're able to actually invest more in the dynamic, invest more in talking to someone else, invest more emotionally into connecting with one another. And this is what's going to help to show your ex that it's safe to talk to you. It's safe to interact with one another. It's safe for them to open up a little bit more, that you're not going to just try and, you know, railroad them into some sort of relationship that they don't feel ready for right now. You're not going to increase the reactance. And that's the important thing, because as you show them that it's safe to interact with you, that it's okay to disarm themselves, to uh, let down their armor and all that, um, their reactance is going to decrease and they're going to move from the second stage into the third stage, which is the middle one, which we call riding the dragon. And um, riding the dragon is a difficult stage for a lot of people. Um, your ex has a lot of hot and cold behavior at this stage, and it's coming from a place of confusion on their part. They're confused about how they feel about you. And when I said earlier that oftentimes immediately after a breakup, your ex ends up at riding the dragon, it's because, you know, right after you break up with someone, there's maybe a part of you that feels good about it and a part of you that maybe doubts if you made the right choice a little bit. So there's some part of you that's waffling back and forth. And that's why I say that um, after, at least immediately after a breakup, a lot of exes find themselves at riding the dragon. 
but it's often things that we do afterwards, like begging and pleading and stuff like that, that pushes them further back. Um, but anyway, you will probably at some point need to experience the riding the dragon stage, unfortunately. And this can be tough um, because you are going to get these hot and cold behaviors from your ex. They might be warm towards you at certain points in time, which is great. You know, it feels good to have them tell you, I miss you. I think we made a mistake in breaking up. Um, I, 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 just, I just miss talking to you. I, you know, I maybe I want to do something physical with you. I don't know. Um, but it also sucks to have the cold side of that where maybe they're saying like, oh, I, 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 I don't think that, that we should actually be friends anymore. Like, I, I don't know why I said that I missed you the other day. Like, we should, we should just totally not talk to each other anymore or something like that. But it's this hot and cold behavior, this back and forth behavior that, uh, that can be very confusing for you, obviously, but it's also confusing for them as well, too. Like, they don't probably want to string you along. They don't want to be this sort of like hot mess that can't make up their mind. Um, but they're going through this confusing process themselves of trying to make sense of how they feel about you. And so they're, they're, they're waffling back and forth. And the important thing at this point is to realize that, like, yeah, they're confused. And if you can relate to that confusion rather than uh, taking their word at it and thinking that they're just, I don't know, playing some sort of sick mind game with you, um, that's going to help you through this. Also, letting it be okay that they're confused that they are confused can help them to work through this issue as well too. It's going to allow them to see that it's okay to show up with to to, to show up um, with you, however they're feeling. If they're feeling confused, it's okay. If they're feeling uncertain about the future, it's okay too. If they just want to um, talk, that's okay too. The more open and accepting you can be, the the better of an effect you're going to have with them. Uh, at riding the dragon, and and just so you know, uh, riding the dragon was actually the the initial stage that we came up with. Um, people ask about this sometimes, and um, basically, I was in the middle of doing something like I don't know, cooking or washing dishes or something like that, and my wife was checking um, our email, and she had gotten a message from one of our coaching clients. And uh, this is like way back when we were first getting started, and she said like, "Oh hey, so and so sent this message." <laughs> His ex is like uh, taking back everything nice that she said the other day. Like, what does he do? And like, I was in the middle of doing all this stuff. So I just said, yeah, just tell me he has to ride that dragon. And she's like, what does that even mean? I said, don't worry. He'll know what it means. And he did. Uh, so we stuck with riding the dragon. And um, that's where it comes from. But if you're able to do this, you're actually able to get to the fourth stage of uh, your ex getting back together with you. And this is where, this is called the crisis point, by the way, but this is where um, things go from like an intellectual process towards actually getting real. You know, up through this point, through wall of reactants or test drive or riding the dragon, this has been kind of an intellectual exercise for your ex. It's been like, well, what would it be like for me to talk to my ex again? What would it be like for us to maybe meet up in person again? What would it be like for us to uh, text again or for us to spend some time together? Would it be interesting? Would it not be interesting? I don't know. But at this point, since we're through that confusion stage of riding the dragon, we're now at what we call crisis point. Your ex is confronting the fact that, they, that they're no longer confused about you, that they actually like spending time with you, that there's a good connection between the two of you. And it's no longer just an intellectual exercise, but it's like, oh, I still have feelings for my ex right now. What does that mean? Now, this is where your ex is confronted with um, with the practicalities of potentially having feelings for you or getting back together. If they're in a rebound relationship, they might have to start thinking about like, does this mean I need to go through the process of breaking up with my rebound? Like we just got together. Is that going to make me look like I'm, you know, one of those hot mess people? Oh my goodness, I'm going to break up with my ex. Oh my goodness, I'm going to get back together with you. Oh my goodness, I'm going to break up with you and get back together with my ex again. And like nobody wants to do that. So your ex is 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 concerned that they're starting to actually have these real feelings. And like, what does this mean practically? Does this mean that they're going to need to... Um, tell all of their friends and family that the two of you are dating again 
Maybe it was embarrassing or hard for them to tell them in the first place that the two of you broke up. And now they want to make sure that this is real before they go through the process of saying like, hey, actually, we're kind of working through some of this stuff. Um, and so this is, this is the issue of the crisis point. Your ex is at this crisis. Your ex is at this crisis of this is becoming something real. What does that mean? And so because your ex is at this crisis point, they may do certain things to actively discourage you from um, connecting with them or being with them. Now, this is very different from when they're just like totally pissed off at you, maybe a wall of reactants or something. Uh, but they're actually discouraging you, saying things like, you know, you could do better than me. Um, you're so attractive, like tons of people would want to date you. Um, or we should see other people or, you know, things like that. Because they're kind of like up against a hard spot here. It's like, what do I do? I have feelings for my ex, but I'm in this rebound relationship. Or what do I do? Uh, we just moved out, and now I think I still love you, and I want to get back together with you. What do I do? I just told all my friends and family that we're broken up, and now I think we might be getting back together, and it's going to be really weird for me to go back and tell them. They're going to want to make sure that this is the real deal before they make that step. So they're going to kind of test you a little bit not necessarily intentionally testing you like there's some sort of evil Machiavellian supervillain or something, but more like they're just kind of giving you an out if you're not serious about this. If you're not serious about this and they say, well, you know, I think you could do better than me, and you say, I think I could too. See ya. Then they're like, Whew, that's great. I didn't have to risk embarrassing myself by ending my rebound relationship for someone who wasn't serious in the first place. I didn't have to risk embarrassing myself by telling all my friends and family that we were seeing each other again when this guy wasn't serious in the first place, right? And so um, your ex is going to try and relieve that pressure through uh, the crisis point. And what you want to do is you want to not let them relieve that pressure. Uh, what you want to do is you want to let them know that you actually are serious about the two of you working things out. You actually care about them. You actually want to um, to be close to them. This is where all that stuff that you're not supposed to do can actually work. Like, uh, you know, being open and and very, you know, uh, <laughs> forthright with your, with your emotions and all of that stuff. Letting them know that you're serious about getting back together. Letting them know that you're committed and all that stuff. This is where this can actually work out really well because it's going to show your ex that if they take that step over the threshold, um, and actually start to rearrange their life in practical ways for the two of you getting back together, that there's going to be like something substantial for them to land on. There's going to be a good, nice, cushy pillow for them to land on. Um, and once that happens, they're emotionally ready to go into that fifth stage, which is what we call new beginnings. And new beginnings is a, a great place to be. Um, basically, you are essentially back together. Maybe you haven't had that conversation yet, and I would highly recommend that you have that conversation. Don't ever just assume you're back together without actually having a conversation about it. It leads to lots of disappointments and upset feelings and all that. Um, but, but at New Beginnings, now is the time where you're essentially on great terms emotionally. There are no more practical obstacles keeping the two of you apart. Um, and now you can just go ahead and just seal the deal and say, hey, have you ever thought about us being together again? And then chances are they'll say yes. Then you say, what do you think about that? And then you can just have a conversation about it. If there's any concerns that they have, like, oh, I'm worried that it might end up being like it was before and we're going to end up fighting again or things might get weird again or whatever, talk about it and co-create some sort of strategies for making sure that things don't go that way in the future for making sure that you create a new beginning together that's not just kind of reviving the old relationship but it's a completely new dynamic that works better than, than whatever clearly didn't work in the past and if you're able to do this you'll be able to create a new dynamic a new relationship something that both of you can feel excited about and you'll be able to do it together uh, it's not just a matter of you know you kind of like begging and pleading and saying like hey please take me back but it's actually both of you co-creating something together that works great for both of you and then of course when you're back together you know keep the relationship strong that's a whole conversation for another video but um anyway this has been our our video on the five stages your ex goes through emotionally. Once again, if you do want to learn some of the practicalities about how to apply this, how to navigate all of this, we do have our X Solution program course. Info on that is down in the description box below this video. But once again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor, 
hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out. And subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. You may also want to check out this video playlist that goes into the five stages in much more detail, or you might want to check out this video over here. But once again, my name is Clay. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.